Fire Emblem. Engage. Hello, everyone. We're Access and Cap. Welcome to Chapter Four of our Fire Emblem Engage Anything Goes Maddening LTC. As you can probably tell by the clickbait thumbnail and the fact that we are co-commentating, Chapter Four is one of our favorite clears in the entire run. This is the first chapter where we gain access to the Preps menu, which opens up a ton of options. We also obtain Sigurd and Selica, two very important early game emblems for LTC, thanks to their high mobility potential. Right from the get-go, we do something pretty unusual by giving Sigurd to Clan. This will be essential to our two-turn clear because the boss is a lance armor with 20 defense. Only Clan and Selene have any hope of killing him, but Selene won't be able to get to him in two turns. Clan, on the other hand, can exactly enter the boss range in two turns with a canter in betray. The problem is that the enemy positioning doesn't seem to leave any targets for Clan to attack and canter with in either turn. Let's get into the clear to see how we can solve that problem. To start things off, we send Boucheron to the bottom village to grab the javelin and send it to the convoy. Bram and Vander also stay below. Etie grabs the javelin from convoy and gives it to Sailing because we want Sailing to hand that javelin to Louis later. Alfred then moves up to chip the lance fighter and sets up a kill for a leer. At this position, he will also bait the hand axe cavalier up there to break him in enemy face. After Alir takes the kill, we now engage Clan with Sigurd and full move ten tiles. As we can see, he is just one tile short of being able to attack and canter two tiles closer to the boss. How unfortunate. Very sad indeed. But to finish the first player phase, we engage Satan as well and immediately warp Ragnarok onto the axe armor near Chloe and Louis. She did promise to save her retainers after all. As Celine warps over, Louis naturally reunites and talks with her. Let's take a moment to enjoy this heartwarming conversation. Princess Saline, how relieved I am to see you unharmed. Hmm? You seem different. The Divine Dragon brought Emblem Celica forth from my ring. I am imbued with her strength. Pardon? The Divine Dragon is here? Indeed. I will explain everything later. For now, let us restore order here. I promise I will never leave you behind again. Come, let us fight together. As you wish. Princess Saline and Emblem Celica, what a pair! After talking, Louis doesn't forget his earlier promise to Chloe to take care of the archer for her. He grabs the javelin from Saline and uses it to set up a kill for Chloe. Let's go. An important side note is that apart from Alir, Chloe will be the most important unit to train in early game and in the entire run. Yeah, we love Chloe. After she records her first kill on this archer, we enter enemy phase. Here we need Chloe to dodge the Axe Armor's 69 displayed hit, which enables her to kill on counter thanks to her personal skill. The Axe Cavalier breaks Chloe after, but that's fine. Alfred baits the other Axe Cavalier away from Clan, and after Boucheron takes two hits down below, Sailing baits a Sword Flyer away from Clan as well. Normally they have the same defense, and Sailing has slightly higher void than Clan, making him the juicier target. But we're able to boost Clan's defense with the Sharina ring from FEH bonuses. This way, Clan does not take any damage in turn 1, which makes him survive against the boss later. This clear would still be possible without the Sharina ring, but it would be less reliable. That's right. Now in turn 2, we have just received the Draconic Time Crystal. We're probably going to edit out its usage from the videos, but it's still a useful tool worth mentioning. The start of turn 2 is not too interesting, we just let Ezia and Boucheron gain some XP. These actions could be used to burn RNs for clans crit on the boss later. Louis chips the Axe Cavalier near Chloe, which enables Sailing to kill with Seraphim. But before doing that, Sailing is going to talk with Chloe as well. Chloe, I am relieved to see you're alright. You too, Princess Sailing. I was able to find Alfred and the Divine Dragon, no less. After that, the Divine One summoned Emblem Celica from within my ring. A noble dragon summoning ancient spirits to save the day. That sounds just like a fairy tale. It does. Now that I have this power, let's give this story a happy ending, shall we? Let's do it. 
I think that this fairy tale will have a very happy ending, thanks to a certain 5 foot tall knight in shining armor. Note that by taking the fort, Celine blocks the mage below her from reaching Louis and one rounding him. Once the axe cavalier is dead, Chloe can now move up to attack a sword flyer there. Wait a second, Cap. Where does this sword flyer even come from? Well, that flyer starts near the boss and moves in the first enemy phase. Normally, this flyer would move down into the left if Chloe killed the mage earlier. But it seems that with Chloe and Louis both moving up, the flyer decided to go up as well. Ah, how convenient. This flyer then makes a perfect counter target for Clan. As he was broken by Chloe, Clan doesn't even take a counter. Exactly. So now Clan just has to land 1 out of 2 6% crits against the boss. And thanks to the speed proc of level 2, he can just barely double. I would have won, you know, if they given me real soldiers. With Clan critting the boss, that's chapter 4 cleared in 2 turns. See you next time. See ya.